Hello everybody, this is Grace on a Journey, and you are listening to Grace on a Journey Channelings. Welcome to the newcomer and to those of you returning, my fellow travelers, welcome back. I am happy to have you. Today's title is Parallel Awakenings. Parallel Awakenings. The first time I ever came across any terminology in relation to this was the idea of parallel lives. It it is believed that all of us have people in our lives that have a similar life. It might not be at the same time in occurrence, but it happens. And the reason why I know it happens is when that term was first introduced to me, parallel lives I took some time to think about it and then there's somebody I've known since my childhood I definitely classify her as someone I have a parallel life with very similar upbringing, um, same background. She grew up in a household <laughs> that had the same strengths and the same challenges, so to speak. And our parents. were so similar. I'm sitting here thinking her father was like my father and her mother was like my mother. And then later on in life, her young adult life, was parallel to mine. Then, moving into marriage, she had a very similar experience. People, it's unbelievable. And I've never actually approached her about this. I don't know exactly how that would make her feel because I was able to process a lot of things in my life through self-healing. In my heart of hearts, I believe she will have an experience with a parallel awakening. I say this in confidence because even though I have not approached her about this, the fact that we grew up with the same religious background, we grew up in the same type of strict household, 
we had the same programming I am willing to gamble that she also will get to a point where, and that's if she hasn't already, will get to a point where she'll sit down and say, you know what, there has to be more than this. There has to be more than this. A lack of satisfaction. Wanting to go in deeper. Wanting to know the depths of your soul. Wanting to know your soul's purpose. Those are all parts of my journey that I went through. And so because we have parallel lives, I know she will have a similar experience. I even was considering just now about our children and trying to figure out if they have parallel lives as well. That's something I'd be able to understand more about when I reconnect with her and we update each other. But, oh yeah, it's a real thing. I'm not saying you are all aware of who you are having a parallel life with, but I'm saying that when you experience that, I coined the phrase parallel awakenings. This is not something I read about. This is what I've been able to process. If there are parallel lives, then there are moments of parallel awakening where you realize that, okay, there are so many experiences that are identical here. I also have observed that sometimes it's not even someone from your generation. Sometimes it's someone two generations above yours that lived a life that you feel as if you are following their footprints unintentionally it just is flowing that way like certain rites of passage that occurred at this age and motherhood and marriage and everything and you see it's as if you're living her life and I have someone like that <laughs> all right That um, I'm very close to in spirit. Very, 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 very close to in spirit. I believe she's always looking out for me. But. I'm trying to share with you without getting too deep in my thoughts. And what I mean about that is a 
self-disclosing with wisdom. All I want to say regarding that. When you speak to younger people, especially children, be careful what you say. Sometimes you say things because that's something you heard all of your life. And if you didn't hear it personally, that's just part of the culture. That's just what people say. That's just what people do. But we are living in a season where we are being awakened to the fact that spell work is done with words. So as much as some people would like to declassify themselves from magicians and so forth, those who have further knowledge in the cults, in the end, a manifested curse is a manifested curse. Whether you use your tongue to say you will never amount to anything or no one will ever you know take you serious or you that is a curse and i know some people would like to beg to differ well i didn't use a spell book i i just said that i was just talking i wasn't i was That is why we spell words, because words are spells. It is time that we all understand the concept that no matter how you do it, you do it. Those of you that claim, you know, You're heavily religious and you don't believe in anything new age and, you know, that is hocus pocus. That is not um, according to the word, quote unquote. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that what I've heard, okay? When you're saying affirmations, you are manifesting them into your life. When you are saying, I am healed, I am healed, he is healed, you are manifesting it. This is not to bring judgment, this is to bring you to terms with reality. There are certain words that you have been programmed to believe That are of a dark light, so to speak. But it's a shared experience. Okay? And when once we understand that concept, we're able to see our lives and the lives of all of those that we connect with with the eyes of love and not the eyes of judgment. That is a process that I've experienced and I'm not ashamed to say I've experienced it. Like everyone else, I was programmed. And one of the ways that you
begin understanding things on a soul level is when you are open to seeing things from another perspective. Now, I want to bring something to your attention. Although I made the decision to not share specific tools that I use, because I was guided not to. You see, we have those with good intentions that are paying attention. And we also have those with troublesome understanding. We'll use that term. That are in a frequency of confusion. In and confusion out. And so I have to be very selective. But once I feel led to share something specific with you, it's because it's going to benefit one of you. And I am I have enough faith In my spiritual support team, that as I disclose certain tools that may be helpful for you, that those that have a different agenda will not have any power to manipulate that for you. I know. They can't manipulate my tools anymore. I also know they were able to do that before a lot of advancement in my spiritual walk. Without getting into too much detail, when you have certain responsibilities, Right? Especially with a mass of people, you need protection. The protection I need is not necessarily the protection you need. When I am speaking to you, when I am advising you, when I am Assisting you in enlightening yourselves. Know that my spiritual battle is not only mine. Your enemies are my enemies as well. And this is why when you have those that assist you especially in your spiritual walk, you need to respect them, people. You have no idea what's going on. You respect people by having an understanding, being patient, seeing things from their perspective. Having the energy of kindness.
And what I'm stating is not in relation to hyping them up or being sarcastic or you know that that that's not the approach I'm talking about I'm talking about insincerity appreciate the change the exchange wow I said the change the exchange of energy the change is what your transformation for what for the better of you for the better of mankind So, this takes us back to what I was guided to share with you. And this is for people that do their work. Their spiritual work. Their soul work. Even after these episodes. My desire is as I share this information that all of you, it doesn't matter what intention you came in, that all of you put it to good use for your highest good. All right? This is an opportunity again. That offers change. That comes through the intention of healing. I want you to research fossilized ammonite shells. The reason why this is being brought to your attention is because the, of the energy that it's associated with. Before I get into the specifics of the energy, I want to give you some awareness in relation to it it is a symbolism that raises awareness of our intertwined ancestral destinies And in detail, that's referring to continuously undergoing a cycle of rebirth as you study the image of a fossilized ammonite shell. You will notice intrical, intricate spirals that begin to expand and that represents the support in every new stage of life 
and how it's all connected. In patterns, seasons, parallels. The ammonite shell influences embracing change. As your journey unfolds. Now. I do have more information. But I'm told. You need to do the homework. So I gave you a brief summary of why the fossilized ammonite shell was brought to your attention. If this is connecting with you, then yes, you should research it, understand, and learn more about it, and ask your guardian angels what further steps you should take regarding those shells. If this message is for you. They will advise you as to what you need to be doing with a fossilized ammonite shell. If you are looking to achieve positive change, That's probably the direction that you may be guided to consider as far as collecting a fossilized ammonite shell for your collections. Now the energy that they're associated with is protection, transformation, spiritual awakening, And so much more. I also want to tell you what else I was um, advised to share with you today, which is a review of what I've already mentioned to you recently it is important those of you that have already been awakened to the fact that you have certain spiritual gifts all right because some of you you haven't arrived at that stage yet. And that's because you are right where you're supposed to be. This is a process that happens gradually. 
And remember what I always share, which is we are all in school. On our own path. On our own pace. So just because I am having certain experiences right now does not mean your experience will be uniform to mine, especially in regards to time sequence, right? I'm hearing what is time. But know that what we all share in common is development, the stages in development. We need to awaken to more of our similarities because we are overly versed in our differences. And because the fact that we are comprehending the concept of all being connected then it is important for us to recognize the parallels in our lives as we go deeper and deeper into our parallel awakenings. I love how I receive messages to share with you prior to receiving the title of the episode and how it's connected. When I was approached to use the fossilized, well, to introduce the fossilized ammonite shell to you, I didn't know today's title yet. But I see the connection. When it speaks about the intricate spirals and the new stages in life. There's a connection there. And as you gain more understanding of the term parallel awakening, it will enlighten you in ways to experience transformation on a higher vibration. Yes, it will offer that spiritual awakening connected to that um, ammonite shell. Yes, the little things, people. (laughs) It's the little things that make me smile. So, little or big, it depends on your perspective once again. This parallel awakening... I 
I am envisioning right now as a door opening. Right? Beyond this door is more understanding. God is opening this door for you to understand the connections and the parallel lives that we share. As we understand those concepts, when he is offering enlightenment, it will be an improvement. in receiving information meaning an improvement in communication in order for us to be able to process it so we can benefit it in depth God wants to communicate to us in many ways. Not just when you assemble together on a determined day of the week. with that focus in mind. He wants to communicate with us at any given time. But we have to be available to receive these downloads. It is available to us all. But we have to be developed, so to speak. So we could be able to register and understand things as they come without getting into too much detail there was something I misplaced and I'm telling you I looked for it I looked for it this happened about maybe three or more months ago and I could never find it and I gave up I gave up one of the reasons I gave up is because I was scrolling down my feed right at one of these social media sites and I came across an individual, I believe he said he was of Japanese descent, and he introduced a Japanese word. And he said, the reason why I want to introduce this word to the public is because there are certain words in certain languages that are not available like you can't readily translate it. You can try to define it, but there is not 
a word specified for that word in particular. And it was in relation to God. He was stating that, you see, when you lose something, and there's no reason why you should have lost it, you remember where you put it. And the times that you don't remember specifically, you remember what area it was in. So you should be able to relocate it, right? As I'm talking to you right now, I'm thinking of something else that I also am unable to locate. I am strategically staining unable to locate because it's not that I misplaced it. I remember where I put it. But I'm not supposed to have access to it for one reason or another. And it's not because of a bad intention on my part. But I believe it's a form of protection. And this is what this Japanese man was stating that when you misplace something and you don't know where it is rewind when you cannot locate something <laughs> we usually use the word misplaced so either or whether you misplaced it or you cannot locate it okay there's a reason behind it and so today I found it and I'm like hold up hold up hold up this is impossible I looked in that location more than a dozen times and it's a location I frequent all of the time every single day how in the world was it there all this time? And I know it was there. I know it's not someone else that necessarily found it and came to put it. In that location. I know it was there because of certain creases. That were in it. Like the creases. Are. Giving me the evidence that. It was folded up. In that area. Right. You can see when something. Has been folded up. And has been misplaced for a while so I do know yeah it was there all along but someone who is on a certain level spiritually you'll say there's a lesson here this didn't happen by accident there's a lesson here God you're telling me that Whatever I misplaced that belongs to me or whatever I was unable to locate, thank you God, that belongs to me, I will be locating it. Now someone else who does not have this type of spiritual alertness, for lack of a better way of saying it, will not make that observation. A lot of you would just brush it off. But when you live, eat, and breathe spirituality, I can include sleep. <laughs> spirituality dream spirituality it's like it is very difficult to disconnect 
in the sense of not seeing the spiritual symbolism behind an action or behind any given opportunity right and it's not necessarily something you can teach either because there are people that are very studious that still would not make that connection because Let me try to explain this the best way I can. Most people that would make that connection are peoples with are people with minds similar to this experience. Meaning it's almost as if you have racing thoughts like you never stop. It's is just always going <laughs> you know even as you're sleeping it's just your mind is always going it's always processing it's always seeking ways to improve it's always trying to um fine tune whatever you're being approached with and that can be a very a very tiring process. And this is why a lot of people with that type of energy get overstimulated to the point where they cannot like they don't have time for how should I put this? unproductive Connections. Like if my mind is always processing for me to gain a better understanding or a deeper understanding about something, and then I have that opportunity versus to connect to somebody that is just going to be talking about something that doesn't make sense. I thought of a couple, but wisdom is stating we don't have to go into detail. <laughs> but a couple of other vices or guilty pleasures or whatever, it's like I'm always going to be attracted to the opportunity to learn. Some people enjoy the process of learning. You know, I enjoy connecting with people that after I leave a conversation, even if it's a word of wisdom, I left with something. And that could just be an experience you had. That could be an experience that your grandmother had. That could be, you know what I'm saying? It has to mean something. When, my, when life means something to you, you like to have experiences that mean something. And this is why doors of parallel awakening are made available to you because of the interests that you have. You attract what you focus on. You attract what, you know... What's always on your mind? Development, growth, progress, and so forth. So, as you Get familiarized 
with communication that you're receiving from the divine. You'll get certain insight that are not necessarily available to your circles just yet. Some may view you as mysterious. And you may appear to be fearless or growing in the energy of fearlessness because As you experience enlightenment, fear begins to become banished in your life because you gain spiritual clarity that assists you with Assurance. There are certain answers you'll receive that will give you a calmness in your spirit. Like it will assist you with anxiety, those of you that have had a history with anxiety, because you will feel more assured. Whether it's in the area of protection or intuition, and believe it or not, purification. One of the Issues people with anxiety have is beating themselves up for not living up to certain unrealistic standards, right? But when you gain more insight, that life is a school, and we're all on a journey, growing and learning, and as we learn more we're able to apply what we learn in our lives, we begin to look at ourselves with the eyes of love and not the eyes of judgment, which leads to us experiencing healing in the department of mental health those of you that have undergone diagnoses whether it is um, anxiety depression depression which is anger towards self right anger towards self comes about when you are judging yourself And in regards to your expectations, not meeting up your expectations, right? And this is why I believe it's all connected. Yes, you would need um, more awareness in that diagnosis of mental illness but without the foundation of 
building yourself spiritually, you will still always be in lack. Now that is my understanding of it. Right? I'm not in the belief that all you need is a bottle of medication. All right? I believe all you need is a lifestyle change. Right? And sometimes that comes with that. But it, sh it should be a balance of things because the fruit of the universe is balance. So this is why when we are attracting healing, we need to attract it in the energy of balance. So one of the ways of going deeper when it comes to parallel awakenings is the awareness that when the past comes to visit it is for you to release and grow and the reason why I'm stating this to you is People, there will be times some of you will experience, whether it is your angels, your guides, whoever is connecting with you on a high vibrational tip that is teaching you self-healing and so forth. Um... You will feel certain topics that are being brought up to you are triggering. I've been there. I'm like, I forgave that person already. What, what's this about? <laughs> like, that's a couple chapters ago. Or... I forgave myself already or I've accepted this already or I've allowed God to deliver whatever outcome that is deemed fit. I do no, I no longer need to be connected to that outcome. Which frees me from needing to obsess over, has it happened yet? Has it happened yet? Have they experienced karma yet? You see, when you release it and you're like, that's your territory, God. Then you have an opportunity to attract. The positives in your life. Until you are able to release. What no longer serves you. You are going to. Continue. Experience. Feeling drained. And this is why. Some of these. Offenders want you to argue, want you to feel hurt, want you to remember. If you want to heal people, let me tell you, you have to release the need to be in awareness of what's going on. Okay, I'm being very careful with my words because I know what is on my mind, but I am taking an approach that is less 
that gives less opportunity for misunderstanding or misinterpretation. There are certain things you do every day without stating what they are. All right? And it's basically draining you and it's basically wasting your time. You can be utilizing that time in so many other productive ways. But it's almost as if you're addicted. Like, I got to know what's next. I got to know what's next. I got to... You, you're... You are in the energy of insanity and you may not even be in the awareness of that. But it's like this addiction. I need more. I need a fix. I need more. I need more. I need more. It never stops. I need more. Right? And this is something you need to pray about. This is not something that any of us can arrive to until we are awakened to the detriment that it is causing us. And decide to do better. You do better when you know better. And I mean what I say. Because I I hear a lot. Well that's not true. It's not that I didn't know. I didn't know. No, No you didn't know. You may have known on a surface level. But when you know it in your soul, it troubles you from your core <laughs> to the point you got to let it go. That That's the point I'm trying to make here. Like certain convictions cause you to have to say no. Because... In the depth of you, no, it doesn't belong here anymore. That's how that works. Look at every mistake you have made as an opportunity. To learn something. And. Get more. An understanding. Of why. And how. You can let go of things without regret. Ways of doing that is what I've been motivating you to do is these life reviews, these self introspections, you know, starting from your childhood, you know, your adolescence, your young adult life, and so forth. And Recognizing the parallels. There are lessons you were introduced to as a child that you're just now understanding. Meaning you had to repeat that cycle over and over and over. And it doesn't make you less than because you had to repeat it over and over and over. It just means... It wasn't learned at a soul 
level. Now, the reasons why we detach from people, places, and things, and energies that no longer serve us, serve us, is because our relationships signify part of the deeper fabric of our lives. What I mean by that. Those patterns, those parallels, when you go deeper, right? You have those parallel awakenings. You're made conscious of the lessons, the opportunities to learn these lessons that are being presented to you. So, now that we're in the knowledge that our relationships signify part of the deeper fab fabric of our lives, We understand that as we evolve, through these, through the journey that we call life, we understand that these changes are natural. And this is why there are times the lesson is detachment, the ability to detach. Now, I'm hesitating with what I'm about to say. With reason. But I'm hesitating because It's a lesson I've learned deep in my soul. But it's also a lesson that can help you understand it deep in your soul. And this is why sometimes as teachers, we self-disclose not to broadcast our lives, but because we are really devoted to offering healing. We want people to heal. We want people to overcome. We want people to grow. Right? So with a deep breath, At a very young age, I learned how to detach. And I had reasons. Okay? Some lessons that I experienced that enabled me to understand certain realities in life. I understood certain relationships were not stable. They could come, they could go at a blink of an eye. And I adjusted to that.
many years in my life. That's how I was living. And the people closest to me found that puzzling at times. Because most people of the I'm trying to use my words wisely but a sign of feminine femininity is communication like one of our traits you know we like to talk and so forth I didn't need to talk if something didn't work it just didn't work it just means I don't pick up the phone <laughs> I'm sorry but I'm being honest with you and That would bring certain people to confusion. It wasn't until later on in life I took that same approach and someone said, Nope, that's what you used to do. That's not what you're doing now. <laughs> and it was like a culture shock because I'm like, no one has confirmation. No one has ever talked to me like this before. Yeah, this is what you used to do, but that's that's not what you're doing now. It's funny to me because I'm like the nerf. <laughs> but it was a good thing because it helped me to grow. So, you know, we're going to be mature. Okay, this is a relationship. This is what you do in a relationship. You learn how to talk about things. You you know what I'm saying? We don't just dip. All right? And I feel that that was an a point in my life where I experienced growth. Cuz then I'm like, "Oh, so we talk about things." We don't just walk away. Now, it was one extreme to another extreme. And the reason why this took place, besides the fact that this was a very stable con connection, in sincerity is in that season in my life I lost someone that was very important to me who passed away and There were some things left unsaid before this person passed away. I experienced having to go through something called Grief Share, which is a program like when you lose a loved one, You attend something like a support group. You attend where people share their experiences, how they are accepting the reality of things and how to take it one day at a time. 
And in that season in my life, I went from one extreme to the other. Where at the beginning, from my childhood, I used to learn how to detach like this. And then later on in life, someone caring taught me different. That okay, we can talk about things and so forth. And when I lost when I lost someone because certain things were left unsaid. I made a promise to myself. I said, there's a lesson to learn here. And I told myself that lesson was to Not sever relationships. And that was, like I said, from one extreme to the other extreme. Now, the reason why that lesson repeated in my life, and I had to sever some connections in my life after that incident is because there was a season that it didn't matter if you were in the energy of no longer serving me. Notice I didn't use toxicity. I said no longer serving me. See, there's different degrees, different levels to it. And I wouldn't necessarily classify anyone who didn't work out as toxic. Sometimes your personalities just didn't match up. Sometimes it's just at a wrong time. You know, it's not the right season. So, there was this pattern of moving on, starting a new chapter, quote unquote, but still being civil with my past. Now, I had to learn that wasn't healthy. Especially if it was in the romantic sense. If you leave a relationship, you leave a relationship. But it was as if when a relationship ended, then the individual p played a different role. A platonic friend, quote unquote. Right. Which never allowed me to learn all those lessons that that disconnection provided me with. Why? Because the connection wasn't totally severed and this is why meanwhile I thought I was doing a positive thing I said well you're doing a good job Grace because you promised yourself that you're going to be civil from now on even if there's a misunderstanding even if you know you're on different pages there's always going to be an understanding 
where you can connect, even if it's just to say hello. But the problem was it was from one extreme to another. All this to say, the connection here is the middle ground. Balance is the fruit of the universe. So, neither extreme were assisting me with the lesson that would afford me completion. Right? So I had to learn, yes, it is good to communicate, right? Especially before the person passes away. You know, especially if that person had a connection with you that can never be replaced. There are those in your life that can be replaced. And that's just the truth. But there are those in your life that you only have one of. And you'll never have another one of. Now, In those circumstances, if it is not in your best interest to have a connection of any sort, what will happen is you'll receive that message. Without getting too deep, my life was being threatened some years ago. And I was not aware that I was connected with those plotting. To take my life away. And in all truth. And this is why my conscience is clear. And. I'm at a very peaceful place in my life. And. feel good in my soul is because God severed those connections I heard that confirmation um yes he severed those connections And I'm okay with that. But because balance is the fruit of the universe, he clarified even with this severing of these connections. And it's amazing that it's plural to me. (laughs) It's amazing that it's plural to me. Because many of them I didn't even know.
and they didn't even know me. They thought they knew me through word of mouth. I uncovered some things today. And when I uncovered it, I said, God, now I see clearly what you're trying to say here, but I thought we was going to take this episode in this direction. I said, but since you gave me these messages, I'm going to keep them anyway. And if they come up, they come up. And now I see why these messages were brought to me. Basically, the words that I received were lies flew nuts my interpretation of that is experiencing some form of insanity in relation to these lies. The following word I got was rut. There are they are at a season of feeling as if they are in a rut. Now, I don't have to get into too many of these words because I understand clearly what they mean. And there are too many words, too many names. But there were things that I had an inkling about that were confirmed today. Certain things that took place. And that is why I believe I I began mentioning this to you earlier. Explore. Even if you think you don't know how to do a certain form of divination, explore. There are those of you that will uncover that there are certain messages that can be brought to your attention because of your connection. There's a misconception that, oh, The only way you can understand how to do such and such is if you take a class for it or if you are an apprentice of some sort. Truth is. Some of us were born for this. I would have never predicted this would be my life. I promise you. This is not how I was programmed. And I had different dreams.
But what's interesting about your soul's purpose is it's connected to your childhood. Because when I've always been exploring as to what my soul's purpose was beginning in my 20s. Right? I was on a quest to know who I was because I grew up in a very strict environment and I wanted to be able to free my mind and process things myself. I learned these methods through my connections to higher learning establishments. That's when my professors taught me that, yes, you was raised this way, but truth is, you need to gain your own understanding of life. And so that's when, you know, I began reading certain books, being interested in going to certain lectures, um, signing up for certain seminars. And through that, I walked into spirituality. And the ironic part is it was connected to a church. I was um, advised to visit that church. And through my interactions with one of the teachers there she introduced me to affirmations through church <laughs> and it spiraled from then and there she taught me how to say affirmations while looking at myself in the mirror and stating these things. And told me to do that for 30 days. And it did help me heal in the area that I was searching healing for. So things are more connected than disconnected. Before we depreciate, let us gain more understanding. Of what we are rejecting. Because. Due to certain settings. And certain programming. Some, some of us were taught to. Villainize certain groups of people. without knowing who they are or what they are about. And that is because of what
I'm choosing my words carefully here. <laughs> but it's in connection to where these types of programming were rooted from which was brought to bring division and disconnection because connection is what leads to empowerment so you not going inward means you don't remember who you are means you don't know your power means that they'll stay above you Open your mind. And understand. Life's motives. Why people do the things they do. How does it benefit them? How does it benefit you? I know that starting over again can bring some resentment as if you feel like you've been lied to all of your life but if you focus on that you'll be paralyzed and you won't be able to move forward we just have to accept that Everything happens on divine timing. And although you may be processing things differently or understanding things differently, that your foundation will always be your foundation. No, I was not brought up in a family that was introducing these topics that I share about today. However, I was taught by my spiritual support team to appreciate all the influences that crossed my path because they are part of me. It may be at a lesser capacity But it left an imprint on me in relation to morality and value and respect and love, hope, peace, grace on a journey. 
And this is why I don't believe in making comparisons regarding religion and spirituality and so forth because they all offer what they're supposed to offer. The wiser you get, you realize that the answer is every group has something to offer. Leading you to no longer discriminate and to function in a manner that uses intellect rather than discrimination. We have many seasons of parallel awakenings in our life. Don't allow the ego to get in your way. As we accept that Some people are seasonal and others are permanent. We also understand the reason behind these connections. These connections, these connections that you have with others are occurring in order for you to reflect the changing inner core processes that are evolving within. You may want to give it some thought in connection to who you may be mirroring. in your life and in that respect keep in mind it may not be to that extent you can also mirror In balance, meaning you can mirror someone while you are paying karmic debt in relation to low vibrations. Meanwhile, mirroring another experiencing Dharma. Reward and recognition. You have to be able to understand perspective and (sighs) 
that there are levels to lessons. There are lessons that are in the energy of severity. And then there are lessons that are gentle, but they are lessons. And that may be due to the fact that you have evolved to a season in your life where you do not, you no longer have to experience I am hesitating to say this, but that is what is coming to me. That depth in pain. Sometimes people learn the hard way. But when you are growing, the gentle breezes are able to sway you. And I'm speaking in a positive manner. Nothing in association to weakness, but in association to surrender and alignment. In seasons of Elevation and evolvement, you are still being redirected. Still being advised to look into this. There's an area in your life you need to look into. There's some changes you need to make. Okay, we've learned this lesson. Okay, this is the next lesson. It's a level of maturity spiritually. You know, the best way I can explain this is what I'm familiar with. I have a background in education. When the kids are younger, there is a lot more review in connection to their classwork. Okay, I need you to complete what's on the board. And towards the less, towards the end of the allotted time, you can have them exchange papers, whether it's with someone in front of them, someone next to them or someone behind them and then we grade the papers together right third fourth grade right now on the high school level okay we need to complete pages so and so on the board at such and such time We will review it together. And 
when we begin to review it, we do it in the form of interaction as we lecture. So they have less supervision than the younger group. And that is the connection to spirituality where, okay, I know that so-and-so can do this. She took this lesson. She passed it already. So I don't need to be hounding over her. I don't need to be presenting detail after detail after detail for her to understand the concept. You see what I'm saying? Again, there are levels to this. And it's nothing about comparison in strength. It's just the pace that you're on. Mind you, the pace that you chose. The lessons that you agreed to. Your commitment to your path and devotion will be rewarded. Now, one thing I want to tell you that would be of great of assistance is specifically acts. To bring understanding on what these rewards look like. Your definition of rewards does not have to be identical to what you are provided with. Because these rewards are in alignment to your highest good. Your rewards to your highest good. while you're having this human experience can be related to materialism. Meanwhile, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And so that takes priority. So these rewards, this abundance, this wealth can be in relation to Spiritual gifts, enlightenment, understanding, wisdom. This concept is... Brought to clarity when you understand that it's all connected. There's nothing wrong with financial wealth. But If you are prioritizing financial wealth before spiritual wealth, there's a lesson you haven't learned. That door to financial wealth stems from 
that spiritual wealth. Because that spiritual wealth gives you a level of understanding which amplifies your confidence and attracts more wealth. In all parts of you. Physical health. Mental peace. Balanced. You see, it's all connected. The unfolding of your journey is only for your highest good. Yes, there are new concepts and change is unavoidable. And most of us don't like change. Some do, but most of us don't. When you finally make that decision to accept that the unfolding of your journey is for your highest good, You then are open to confirmation. You then are open to finally giving yourself the love that you deserve. As you give yourself the love that you deserve, you get you. Are granted more of a promotion in ascension. Always call God to you. God, I want more of you. God, I want to be connected to you. That's a form of intelligence. That's a form of love. That's a form of peace. That's a form of development. That's everything you need. That's expansion. You see, God will assist you in being clear about your life's intentions as you move forward on your journey. You see, moving forward requires planning. I know you've heard let go of people place wow it's detached from people places and energy that no longer serves you but here I'm saying let go some of you need to let go some of you need to hear that wordage let go there's something you need to let go of that's a confirmation for somebody there's something There's someone that asked God, do I have to let go? And that's your answer, let go.
if you don't want the answers, it's going to be difficult because even if you avoid <laughs> let me raise my finger and say I've been there before where there were certain things in my life I did not want to let go of all right I just didn't and I was in the illusion that I couldn't so I started avoiding cert certain places because <laughs> I said uh-uh if I go over there I know they're going to start talking over about this and I'm going to have anxiety, I'm going to have depression, I'm going to have this. Now I'm going to avoid it. Guess what? I'm watching a movie. That's the storyline. I'm listening to the radio. Those are the lyrics. If God wants to tell you something... He'll tell you it underneath your bed if that's where you attempt to hide. And that's nothing but the truth. So, my point in saying Detach from people, places, and things, and energies that no longer serve you. It's connected to old programming that you need to let go of. Some of you, subconsciously believe that you're here to suffer. I paused because that's a moment of realization for some of you. Choosing to believe that you're here to suffer. But choosing To improve yourself would be utilizing your energy in a more powerful way, regardless of your karmic debt. Yes, we all have karmic debt. However, That does not need to be our focus. Especially if we're trying to move forward. Your guardian angels want you to know. That you need to reconnect. With your purpose. And if you don't know from where to begin, begin asking them to open your eyes to it. Be careful, those of you that are leveling up. Because you are in a vortex that is rapidly manifesting. Right? So, if you need help with being positive, ask for it. Because what you focus on is what you attract. 
You can ask to have a raise in your vibration. You can ask for more positivity. You could ask to be in the energy of love. If you feel unloved, you can ask to feel loved. You can ask everything. The angels of forgiveness are drawing close to help release you from past lessons, enabling you to embrace the lessons within them. Which means you would be releasing that trauma by embracing the lesson it offered you. Yes, I experienced such and such, but it taught me to. And that's a lesson I will never have to repeat again. Know that whatever direction you are in the mindset of going to is Well, needs your, it needs your prayers, your affirmations, your positivity. And I want to tell you, it's more than what you say. It's what you believe. For example, if you say, I am strong. Let's say that is your goal. You want to feel strong or you want to feel stronger. You could say it till your face turns blue. Until you believe it. It's not going to take you to the avenue that you are trying to connect to. And I can back that up by saying that the spirit realm has access to your thoughts. Those of you who didn't know, now you know. Confirmation. And this is why I like to say that there's really no such thing as secrets. Now, that's not to say that there are some of you whose energy is not being made available. But that is a selected few. With reason. You hold certain positions. And certain information is. Only being made available to. Those who need to know. So your intentions, your plans, your processes are not readily available to all those that want to exploit in some manner. This is something I was personally 
told. I could get into more detail as how this relates to you, but I, I prefer to stick on parallel awakenings. I also want to share that it's important to observe because when you observe, you recognize these parallels and you gain more awakening, right? You gain wisdom and It takes you in the strides of victory. Right? That requires obedience. When you are in obedience, that's in relation to accepting the fact that the benevolence of this universe has your best interests in mind. And that will offer you harmony and peace. Right? And releasing these people, places, and things, and energies that no longer serve you releasing them will calm anger anger due to your past experiences and injustices that you may have undergone. It's okay to be in hermit mode. Someone needs to know that. Because it permits you to soul search and to gain more spiritual insight It's necessary for self-reflection, introspection, all right? And it's in these moments of solitude that you receive more of an availability of inner guidance. Work on your heart. That should be one of your prayer requests. Heal my heart. That's a major part of the process. Release the need for revenge. Pray about that. Say your affirmations about that. Read about that. Watch videos about that. Write about that. Because it requires all these different efforts in self-expression to help you arrive at that authentic, sincere healing. It's all related to the work that you put in. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Are you willing to do the work? Only you know.
Some of you are in union. And your union is balanced. And you're in a season of joy and pleasure. You arrive to that season because you connected to being obedient and remove those negative energies from your life all right you understand that as much as you are in the energy of love sometimes you need to be in that energy of being a warrior a warrior of light standing for up for what you believe in Setting boundaries when it is necessary. Trusting God no matter what. I'm hearing just believe. Just believe. Just believe in God. He will save you. He will save you. He will protect you. Some of you are experiencing harvest season. And you can be calm about it. Call in calmness because it is protected in its highest capacity of. Be thankful. Be in the energy of gratitude. I feel that we are all headed in the right direction. No matter where you are, know that you're not alone. And most importantly, know that you are loved by God. Continue journaling and journeying within. Connect to Activities in relation to self-expression as much as you can. It will connect you deeper and deeper with the depths of your soul. Be at peace with your soul. 